Welcome to the Arcus Foundation's 2022 Annual Report. I'm Brian Simmons, Vice President of Communications here at the Foundation. This year, for the first time, we're presenting the report in video format only, maintaining the structure of past reports. You'll hear from John Stryker, our founder, and from our CEO, Annette Lanyo. Then, you'll hear from Katie Schofield, a director in our Grade 8s and Gibbons program, and Ali Jernow, Vice President of our Social Justice Program. They'll present highlights, followed by grantee stories. And of course, we'll provide an overview of all our grants and financials for 2022. For more information about the important work our grantees are doing, visit our blog and follow us on social media throughout the year. Thanks for watching. Foundation can't do anything without people on the front lines actually doing the work. That's the only way things change. And financially, it's been super challenging. Arcus has had to do additional grant making for organizations, sanctuaries in Africa that counted on money from tourism and all that stopped. And so we had to give additional grants to these organizations so they could continue to pay staff and run their programs. And the war in Ukraine has changed the dynamics around gasoline prices and the demand for fuel. And there's been shortages and so the prices have gone up and it puts pressure on countries that have untapped resources. For instance, in the Congo, we're now seeing government is giving licenses to companies to go in and drill for oil in areas that often are pristine and that are protected already and are homes to many people and, and many apes. There's a tremendous amount of violence against the LGBT community. And that's why the Arcus Foundation really tries to support these communities that are really the most threatened. I think both in social justice and conservation, the arc of change is very long. We tried to build Arcus as an institution that will be here for many decades to come. Many fledgling organizations that we support, they need small amounts of resources over long periods of time, not uh, a big influx and then us pull out. They need partners long term and they need resources long term. And hopefully we will help nurture their growth and they will become more and more effective. And, manage the kind of change that we're all looking to make. The Arcus Foundation has a very specific mission, which is to focus on social justice for lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender people around the world, as well as the conservation, the survival, and the well-being of the great apes and the small apes. These are two very specific mission areas, but they are part of a much larger movement of human rights, social justice, and sustainable management of land and natural ecosystems. And so the importance is to see these issues as specific issues with specific needs and specific priorities, but at the same time, perceive them as part of these ecosystems of change that are linked to health, that are linked to poverty alleviation, that are linked to all sorts of other sectors in both the social justice and the Great Apes and Gibbons program. We have geographical areas of focus. In the Apes program, we call it our Arcus Priority Landscapes, which are landscapes which have been identified because they are priorities for ape conservation. And that's in the range states where apes are found across the tropical belt of Africa and in Southeast Asia, where we are supporting different conservation programs. And on the social justice side, we also have geographical regions where we uh, focus our support. We are focusing in the southern belt of the United States. We are focusing in Mexico, Central America and the Caribbean, and also on Eastern and Southern Africa. One of the areas that we have been putting more and more emphasis on is supporting indigenous people and local communities and their groups and organizations to enable them to be leading on conservation efforts. 
like threats to apes and habitat loss, and also supporting trans-led and LGBTQ groups that are leading the work that needs to be done to celebrate and protect and provide security and safety to LGBT people around the world. We put an enormous emphasis on listening and learning from partners, from movement leaders, from different people on the ground who can help us understand what the issues are and what their greatest needs and priorities are. There are local solutions that are very specific and very particular to those issues. And then there's larger scale, regional or national or global types of initiatives. And we need to work at all these different levels. We're all seeing the problem in a, in a way that is different from the way others see it. And together, as partners, we can move the agenda forward. Arcus Foundation focuses on the conservation and captive care of great apes and gibbons across 24 priority landscapes in Africa and Asia, as well as some support to sanctuaries in the US and in Kenya. One of the challenges that we faced in 2022 is that threats really continue to intensify in the landscapes where we prioritise ape conservation. So we wanted to be much more deliberate in integrating and centering human rights in conservation and particularly the ancestral land rights of indigenous peoples and local communities that live alongside great apes and their habitats. It's around 80% of terrestrial biodiversity is found on the territories that are governed or managed by indigenous peoples and local communities around the world. And what's happening across much of Africa and Southeast Asia is that many of these ancestral land rights aren't fully officially recognised and that can leave vast areas of land and all of the species that are home to relief vulnerable to th external threats from things such as industrial agriculture, mining, logging, large-scale hydropower, road development. But Parkus has been working to support its grantees to address these threats and protect these ecosystems. One of the ways that we've been supporting more deliberate action is to help the Indigenous peoples and local community-led organisations to secure official recognition for their land rights so that they're better able to protect the land from some of these threats. And also at the same time, supporting some work that's helping to revive some of those cultures that have been degraded because some of these threats are also degrading some of the human cultures that are associated with those areas. One of the organisations that we supported in 2022 is Social Entrepreneurs for Sustainable Development in Liberia. And that's a really strong Liberian organisation that's working with government, with other conservation organisations, including Arcus grantees, to help strengthen involvement of community voice and community rights in conservation. And Liberia is a really important country for Western chimpanzees. And so this has been a really interesting uh, grantee for us in terms of exploring how a more rights-based approach to conservation can help to advance ape conservation. The land we live in is a constant marine land. And whether you get less, you get people or you, you get D or you not get D, the land is for you. Once you're full father from that place, the land is for you. Our project has been instrumental to strengthening capacity in Liberia amongst the Forestry Development Authority and rangers of the Sapo National Park in protected area management, especially related to chimpanzee uh, conservation. Communities are the front and center of uh, conservation. They are the ones that live closest to the forest. They themselves are actually better placed to protect an area in collaboration with government. In the southeast of Liberia, many communities are impacted by monoculture or palm development. And since their mission is to support rural communities and to defend their rights using the community development approach, and renowned Liberian lawyer did a legal analysis on uh, the Liberian law relative to uh, communities' uh, rights in uh, the protected area and these uh, legal briefings were presented to them on how or, or the, the best approach to take in terms of a gazette of the protected area as a result of this uh, engagement at the national level we have seen some positive gains 
The culture wars of 2022 didn't just start in 2022. If we look back just a few years, we see a real proliferation of bills at the state level, uh, specifically targeting trans youth and trans student athletes and their uh, ability to participate in sports teams consistent with their gender identity. The culture wars escalated with attacks on curricula and books and the queer community more broadly. This toxic discourse is reflected in very, very, very real world threats of violence. One of the culminations of this was the massacre at Club Q in Colorado Springs, which killed five people. There is strong connections between the dynamics that we're observing in the U.S. Um, and what is happening uh, in countries outside the U.S. In Uganda, a member of parliament uh, introduced a bill that has very severe penalties, including the death penalty um, for repeat acts of consensual sex. The bill also criminalizes any form of advocacy. And so we are in a very scary reactionary time but there is still progress in a reactionary time. In the US, one of the most visible signs of the ways that our grantees have really shifted public opinion is the fact that the Respect for Marriage Act passed on a bipartisan basis. In the Eastern Caribbean, um, Arcus Grantee ECAID has coordinated and spearhead uh, efforts to challenge uh, that region's sodomy laws. So in Antigua and Barbuda, St. Kitts and Nevis, and most recently Barbados, um, the high courts in those countries issued decisions um, striking down the laws that criminalized same-sex sexual conduct. In Mexico, all 32 states have now guaranteed marriage equality and equal family rights for same-sex couples and access to what I broadly term legal gender recognition, but that means change of name and identity documents. I like to think that Arcus is like a long-term and trusted partner for our grantees and for um, our movements more broadly. We try and figure out how to move the resources that will make organizations stronger more protected, more secure, that will make activists safer. This is not just about public opinion. The vast majority of people do not support these laws that attack trans people and trans youth. This is actually about throwing hooks to the future and ensuring our movements are strong, that our organizations are resilient, that we have the capacity to carry us towards a better day. 2022 was a year of unprecedented attack on the rights of our community. You see school districts where all of the books have been removed from classrooms until they can be uh, read, screened, and approved by the governor's appointees. We are seeing ourselves being erased from curriculum. We are seeing ourselves being removed from libraries. We are seeing political litmus tests being applied to teachers and professors. And so every time we're able to show up, whether it's at school board meetings or at city councils or in Tallahassee and have people who are directly impacted, it's making a difference. Our Safe and Healthy Schools program is in its sixth year and we've reached over 3,100 professionals and educators with trainings to support inclusive policies and procedures. And most notably, the Safe and Healthy Schools team provided eight trainings to the Florida Department of Children and Families protective, Child Protective Service Investigators in Central Florida. The resistance in Florida is growing daily and the lessons we've learned here are already helping other states block bad policies. At the Arcus Foundation, we value transparency and present audited statements of financials and grants on our website at the end of each year, dating back to 2010. Here we show you the latest figures available at the close of 2022, with our expenses totaling $38,715,000. Both Social Justice and Great Apes and Gibbons grant-making expenses amounted to roughly $14 million each. The remainder covers programmatic and operating support to this grant-making. Arcus made 127 grants during 2022. 
65 social justice related grants, and 62 Great Apes and Gibbons related grants. In our social justice strategy, we give priority to LGBTQ communities that have been pushed to the margins based on race, gender, or economic status. To achieve the greatest impact for LGBTQ social justice with the Foundation's finite resources, ARCUS has prioritized 12 countries within the Americas and Africa. In 2022, our grant making was shared between the United States and 11 other countries. ARCUS's Great Apes and Gibbons strategy is driven by its mission to ensure conservation and respect for the world's gorillas, chimpanzees, bonobos, orangutans, and gibbons. Our grant-making supports work across 24 priority ape range landscapes in Africa and Asia, as well as the United States and Kenya, where apes are held in captivity outside of their range. 77% of 2022 grant-making, roughly 10,863,000, was allocated to conservation of apes in their natural ranges. The remainder supported the well-being of apes in captivity.